Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create 3D text in your Valorant cinematics using After Effects and Blender. I just like to start off by saying I did release a Valorant cinematics pack a few days ago. Be sure to go check that out if you need any cinematics as well as some other videos on how to edit them, record them and how to camera track just using After Effects using a plugin called Element 3D instead of Blender. However, this is going to be the free version as uh, Element 3D is quite expensive. So by using Blender, you can reduce that cost and it's well essentially free other than After Effects. So to start off what you're going to want to do is create a brand new After Effects project and then new composition. Make sure you match the resolution and the frame rate to the cinematics you're using. In my case that's 1920 by 1080 at 60fps. I'm going to hit OK and then all I'm going to do is add my cinematic. Okay, so for this video I'm going to be using Ascend 15 from my cinematics pack. However, when you're using a cinematic uh, for this method, there cannot be brackets in the name unfortunately, as the script we're going to use to import the camera from After Effects into Blender will spit out a syntax error if you have brackets in your clip name. So I'm just going to remove the brackets just like that and then we're going to drag that straight into After Effects. Now what you want to do is drag it onto your timeline, go up here to Window, make sure Track is ticked and then down here you'll see track camera just click that it's going to analyze the background and solve the camera for us and as you can see it's just going to solve the camera and then we'll see all these colorful dots all over the place which are tracking markers as you can see and we're just going to go through like we did in my previous tutorials which if you haven't seen i recommend you at least check out the first one which will show you the basics of camera tracking and then we're going to try and find three points which are here throughout the entire cinematic so i'm going to go with these three on the back wall as you can see they're pretty much there the entire time so i'm gonna select them like this make the little triangle in the middle just by clicking in the middle of it right click hit create null and camera and then down here you can see we've got the 3d camera tracker so this next step is going to involve you needing to download a script which is really really easy all you have to do is go to this website which will be linked in the description scroll down here to where it says atom e to blender 27 or 2.7 you're then going to click that download it and then this should appear in your downloads folder which we're just gonna extract. And that's literally all you've gotta do. So now that we've camera tracked it, we're gonna go up to file, scripts, run script file, and we're gonna run this script. If you get an error message saying that it cannot run the script for any reason, come up to edit, go to preferences, down to scripting and expressions, make sure allow scripts to write files and access network is checked. Then file, scripts, run script file, we're gonna select this script, hit okay, Call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine tutorial.py. Remember to have the .py at the end. Blender 2.7. It's going to automatically export to your desktop. However, you can browse and choose somewhere else if you wish. Um, I'm just going to hit export. And now that's done. We can minimize After Effects or close it. It's up to you. And then we're going to head straight into Blender. For this tutorial, you're going to need an older version of Blender. I believe the most current version is 2.82. And we're going to need 2.7 something. So in my case, I'm using 2.79. To download that, all you need to do is come over to the Blender, Blender website, which will also be linked in the description. Go to where it says previous versions. Stable Blender 2.79 B official release. If you're on Windows uh, and you have a 64-bit machine, click this one, Windows64.msi, 32-bit this one. And then you've got your Mac and your Linux and all your other the versions on here as well. Now what you're going to do is click anywhere on the screen to remove this little window. Use the middle mouse button to scroll in and out and if you hold it you'll be able to pan around and then all I'm going to do is hold control and the right mouse button to select everything and press delete and yes. Now what you're going to want to do is come up to where it says default click this and go down to scripting and you're going to hit open find where it output your script so in my case that's on my desktop you can see it's here tutorial.py open text block and then run script. Now it's not gonna look like much has happened, but if we go back to our default view, if you hold the mouse button and look around, you should, as you can see, there's a camera in the distance. Yours may be closer, mine's really far away. If you press zero on your numpad, that will bring you into the camera view. And if we hit play, you should see that the camera is now animated, just like it would be in After Effects. You can see it's flown past this plane if you watch it just like this, you see? Now what you wanna do is come into the camera view, make sure that your render and scene settings are set up properly. So your resolution 1920 by 1080 or whatever your cinematic is at, at 60 FPS. Then select the camera border by right clicking come to this little camera option and you'll see here under lens clipping change the end to some number sort of like a billion 10 billion something like that just a really big number and then you're going to press n on your keyboard see where it says view change this end to a massive number as well 
and that's just going to make sure that all the elements we put on screen are going to stay on screen. Then you're going to come down for it says background images, check that, hit the down arrow, hit add image, and then change this to movie clip, uncheck camera clip, and open our cinematic that we used before. So in my case, that's just called a send. It was a send 15, but we removed the bracket. So I'm just going to hit open clip. And as you can see, now if we scrub through the timeline, you can see it as animated, it is quite laggy, but it is animated to the clip. Now what you're going to want to do is find the section in the clip where you want to put the text. So I'm just going to hit play, go through, try and find. So I want it to be roughly in this archway. So about here. So now what I'm going to do is press shift A text come out of the camera view by holding the middle mouse button and just moving around scroll out and i'm going to try and find where that text is so in my case it's all the way over there i'm going to zoom out a bit hold shift and press the middle mouse button to move across and then i'm going to drag this text up over towards my camera middle mouse button to pan around move it up across and zero on the, on the numpad to go back into camera view as you can see we've now got this text in front of the camera now if you press r and then x on your keyboard that will rotate it around the x-axis and then you can just move your mouse to the point where the text is pretty much facing the camera something sort of like that and then come down here where it says object mode into edit mode and type in whatever you want so in my case that's going to be tutorial i'm then going to press ctrl a to select everything and on the right over here under the text options you can come down here to horizontal alignment to center vertical alignment to center and then I want to change the font so I'm going to come over here where it says regular hit this directory button go to windows fonts and you can see here are all the fonts that you have installed on your computer and I'm just going to use this font hit open the font and as you can see it's now in the viewport you can change between fonts just by pressing this button if you don't like the one that you've chosen I'm just going to use this and then come back into object mode. Now I'm going to recenter my text to where I want it to be and maybe move it back slightly. You can either come out of the text and drag it how I just did or use this panel at the top where it says location, drag the X, Y and the Z. This is probably the better way to do it um, as you get a direct view from the, from the camera port. And I'm just going to go through and try and make sure that it's exactly in the camera where I want it to be. So I want it to be further back. I'm going to increase the font size by quite a quite a significant margin, something sort of like that. I found what helps on positioning the text is if you add the extrusion and bevel beforehand as it gives you a better, more of a presence in 3D space and is easier to position. So I'm going to extrude it by 0.5, which as you can see has sort of added this much more, much more thickness to it. Maybe I'll shrink it a little bit, maybe 0.3. Go. I think I like that a little bit more and then come to bevel where it says depth and I'm going to drag that up a bit something sort of like that and max out the resolution as you can see we've now got this beveled text I'm going to go back into the camera view pressing zero on the numpad and I'm just going to go through my cinematic and as you can see it's sort of it's not quite where I want it to be I want it to be a bit further back so I'm going to drag the y back drag the z up rotate it a little bit more towards the camera sort of like that see how that looks I think that's much better. So you can see it's now trapped to the inside of the of the archway, pretty much exactly where I want it. I do want to make it slightly bigger, so I'm going to increase the size slightly, but that will mean that I then need to push it back a bit further. There you go, something sort of like that. I quite like how that looks. Obviously you can play around with the positioning a bit more and get it to look exactly how you want it to look. I'm just going to show you like this for the sake of the tutorial. And then now what you want to do now that you've positioned it and sized it accordingly, you want to come up to where it says Blender Render and change this to Cycles. And then we're going to install this free add-on which will give you 800 free textures to use on your text. Come to the third link in the description which will be for this page. You're just going to create an account and then you'll see a download button that will then download and you'll have and then you'll have this file in your downloads folder. And all you're going to want to do is come up to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, Install from Add-on File, go to your Downloads, and then select that zip folder that we just downloaded and hit install add-on from file and then you should see material materials library cycles ticket and it's now installed if it doesn't show up just make sure that you've got community ticked and then you can search for it just by searching material and it will come up and you can just tick it and install it now if you've selected the text come over to the materials section hit new and then at the bottom you'll see this material library VX which is what we just installed. Now what I recommend you do is you come down to where it says viewport shading, change it from solid to material and now you'll be able to see what material we apply. So if we go to select library all of these will have been added for you. I'm going to go into metal and I think I'm going to use this brushed metal material 
and I'm going to hit over here where it says add, remove, apply, preview, clean material. I'm going to click that and you'll see it's now applied the material. You can't really tell from this view, but if you swap to where it says rendered, you can now see it's actually got a texture to it. And we'll go back into material. So that doesn't look very good uh, at the moment because we don't have any lights. So now what we want to do is try and add some lighting to your text. So what I'm going to do is press shift and A, go to where it says lamp and I'm going to get a sun. I'm going to drag this over to above the text. Now you want to try and match the lighting in the scene to how it was in your cinematic. So I'm going to have a light sort of up here, a sun, and I'm going to go over here and increase the size of it to about three, something like that. If you go back to the camera view and swap back into rendered, you should now see that we've got this sort of light coming from the top, you see? And by dragging the size, we can change how intense it is. You see, it's almost non-existent. Drag it up to about five or so and it gets much, much brighter. So I think I'm gonna leave it around six-ish, something sort of like that. And then I'm gonna come back out swap into material view again shift a lamp and then i'm going to select a spotlight drag it up drag it across hit r and x to rotate it on the x-axis point it towards my text sort of like that actually want it to come from a little bit higher so something sort of like that will do maybe down a little bit just sort of play around with it lighting will take time to try and make it look as accurate as possible but worst case scenario we can always fix it in after effects if we need to it's not too big of a deal for example if you make it it's always better to have it too dark than to have it too light and we'll see what that looks like in the camera preview back on rendered and i think that's looking quite good already I might increase the size of it slightly sort of like that and I think we're going to leave it there. Obviously, play around with it a lot more. You can cycle through materials, find one that suits your cinematic a lot better. I just sort of picked one from the top of my head. Uh, mess around with the lighting, try and match it to the scene a lot better. I'm just going to show you the, the basics, try and not overcomplicate it as best as I can. And there we go, just going to make sure that everything's good before we try and render it out. And then what you want to do before we render it out is come to the point in time after the text disappears. So once you've flown through it, or just the end of the cinematic in general, depending on how much you have, but I'm gonna wait until I get to the point where I've flown through it. So that's about, roughly about here, I'd say. And then you're gonna change, you see the start is one, you're gonna change the end to whatever this number is. So frame 295 is the frame where I've gone through the text. And there you go. So I'm just gonna go back to frame one. So you can see right from the beginning. And then I'm gonna come over to, on the right where it says output, I'm going to create a folder, so I'm going to go into... So I just made a folder called text where I'm going to save the rendered output of the 3D text that we just made. I'm going to hit accept and then come down here, select PNG, RGBA because we want transparency, compression to zero. I can leave the color depth at eight, that's perfectly fine. And then where it says film, you can want to make sure you tick transparent. Come up to sampling and adjust the samples. The lower the amount of samples, the faster it's going to render. The more samples there are, the longer it's going to take to render, but it will be much higher quality i'm just gonna put my down to about 50 for the sake of this tutorial of course you might want to render yours with more and then all you're going to do is press ctrl and f12 and it's going to render out every single frame into an image sequence which we can then use in after effect okay so it's now rendered out every single frame a quick tip for when you're rendering it if you need to stop halfway through you can always hit the x at the top um, and then when you come to render it again go back to the previous frame that you got to by changing the start value down here. So if you just make a note of what frame you're at when you stop the render and then put that in at the start, it will then continue rendering from where you were before um, in case you need to take a break or something like that. So I'm gonna minimize this. As you can see, everything has been rendered in here. As you can see, all the frames have been rendered into this folder that I set them to be in. The last few are actually black, but that's because there's not actually any text on screen. So we can just go ahead and delete all of those. And there you go. Now it's time to import them into After Effects. So in order to do that, you're going to go back to the composition that we used before. X out of the script if you still have that window open. And then you can go over to the project, right click, hit import, file, locate where you had them stored. So in my case, that was text. I'm going to select the first one. And you'll see down here png sequence should automatically be ticked if it's not make sure you tick that and hit import now it's going to appear on the left side and you're going to want to right click hit interpret footage main and then change here the frame rate to whatever the frame rate of your cinematic was to begin with so mine was 60 so i'm going to change that to 60 hit ok and then drag it onto the timeline above my cinematic and as you can see it's now appeared within the cinematic so if we preview this You can see the text is perfectly tracked. 
it's all looking good it's where it was when we did it in blender and it's looking perfectly fine one thing i'd like to point out is you can see on the text there's all this noise and that's because we didn't have our samples set too high obviously you're going to want to set your samples when you render it a lot higher that can be found just down here. I set mine at 50, you might want to set yours around 100 or so and tick square samples. Square samples will dramatically increase around the time but the quality should be a lot better. So it's really up to you, you just play around with it. If you want an in-depth video on how to use Blender for this sort of thing, you know, what settings to configure, how to camera track in Blender itself and things like that, make sure to let me know in the comments section below and I can definitely make that for you. I just wanted to try and keep this tutorial as simple and basic as possible for people who, for people who are perhaps not quite as familiar with Blender as they are with our after effects so yeah that's why there's um that's why there's lots of noise on here however once you know when you're zoomed out it's not really that noticeable especially when it's moving so quickly but i would recommend bumping your samples up a bit another thing i'd like to point out is these black sections on the letters i believe that's an issue with the material i used and the font so i rendered out some test ones earlier when i was practicing for this uh using a different texture and the default font and i didn't have any problems as you can see with any black sections obviously there's just a shadow under that t but that's quite normal but I didn't have any issues with the R or any anything like that. These all rendered out perfectly fine as you would expect. So that's just something to look out for. But now that it's in your in your cinematic and it's tracked and everything, that's pretty much all there is to it. You can delete the tracking null and the camera tracker. All you have now is the PNG sequence and the cinematic itself. One quick thing I would like to point out, which you can change about the text after the fact, is if, for example, you know, I think this is slightly too dark, I can go over to the effects and choose something like curves or something like brightness and contrast and drag it onto the PNG sequence and adjust it like this. So for example, if I wanted to make it lighter, you know, I could do something like that. So obviously that's looking more chromey rather than the sort of grunged metal that it was originally, as well as increased contrast and things like that, just to make it look you know, slightly different if you did mess up with the lighting or something like that. That is always a possibility to fix afterwards. Just simple things like lighting, uh, color grading, things like that you can fix afterwards, but you wanna make sure that you've got the majority of it right in the render itself. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Everything I do after this is completely optional, but what I'm gonna do is add some color correction, add some black bars and time remap it. So you'll see what that looks like on the screen now. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments section. Leave a like on this video if you found it useful and subscribe for future tutorials. Make sure you check out my cinematics pack and other tutorials all relating to Valorant montages in the playlist at the end of the video and also in the description. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for clicking on the video and I'll see you in the next one.